God's love, the love that binds Father and Son together in the Trinity, is the Holy Spirit. In the Trinity, there's the Father, Creator, Abba, Daddy. There's the person of the Son, Jesus, Savior and Brother. And the person of the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier, indwelling love. The mystery of God is a mystery of love. Love poured out into creation, poured out in redemption, accompanying us through life. Even though the Trinitarian mystery is intellectually on the limit of our understanding, its reality is experienced wherever we encounter God's love, whether that's within creation, whether it's in the compassion of people, whether it's in goodness or beauty or in the sacraments. The Holy Spirit is uncreated love, the presence of God in our midst. And that's the gift that Jesus pours out on the apostles there in the upper room in today's gospel and on Pentecost upon that first community of Christians. Where there is love, there is God. As the first letter of John says, whoever loves is born of God and knows God. And we see in that first Pentecost day that which really is a prophetic happening. The apostles are filled with the Holy Spirit, and they leave their fears behind, and they go out and speak to the crowds who've come up to Jerusalem for the Jewish feast of Pentecost. There was a Jewish feast of Pentecost, which is basically a celebration of the coming of the commandments to uh, Moses on Mount Sinai. So you've got all these people from various parts of the Jewish diaspora, not only in the Greco-Roman world, but in the Persian world and down into Africa. And they proclaim Christ and his resurrection ecstatically. And these men who know Aramaic and Hebrew and a little bit of Greek are heard by everyone in the crowd in his or her own language whether that be Farsi, Coptic, Latin, Greek, Syriac, Aramaic. And this is a prophetic miracle pointing to the fact that the message is going to go out to all the world. What happens in sign there on Pentecost Day is more and more realized in our world where you can go to more than 160 nations in the world and find Christians. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is proclaimed in a myriad of languages, a myriad of cultures. The Catholic Church, which 60 years ago had predominantly a European face, will in August, at the next consistory, have cardinals from 69 nations. It's not going to be primarily Italians <laughs> and Europeans as it used to be. And a church which too often has had its bishops and cardinals from those of the upper classes more and more takes on the true Catholic faith because Catholicos means universal. So it takes on the face of the universal body of Christ. And having chosen an Adivasi cardinal from India in the last consistory, Pope Francis will make a, a Dalit a cardinal in the August consistory. So the two most discriminated against groups in India, the Aboriginal peoples and the untouchables, will each have a cardinal archbishop among them. Like the first African-American bishops here in the United States, this is a sign of God's love for all, 
a call to all of us to grow beyond our prejudices, to take on the mind and heart of Christ. This is what the Holy Spirit does. In the gospel, Jesus says, peace be with you, and whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. The Holy Spirit is the advocate who urges us to work for peace, whether that's in our families, in our communities, in our church, in our nation, and in the world. This peace can come about only where there's forgiveness. And that's a gift to be prayed for time and time again. Such forgiveness is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings a person from a thirst for revenge and an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth to Jesus on the cross. He cries out, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. Every evildoer does not fully know that the evil he or she is doing is a contradiction to what he or she was created for. We're created for love and out of love. And this alone satisfies the restless heart. We need the Holy Spirit to convert us more and more into persons of service, persons of love, persons ready to manifest the Spirit for the common good. So on this Pentecost, may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of love, the Spirit who advocates for those on the margins, those forgotten, may the Spirit transform us more and more into the body of Christ in the world working to break down the walls of hatred and neglect, bring about healing and reconciliation, that we might find that our true destiny is in love. I want to end with a poem of a friend of mine, uh, Brenda McLaughlin, a teacher and, and a friend of Ignatian spirituality. It's called Lessons in Grace. I wanted to learn how to pray, so I climbed up a mountain to watch the red-tailed hawks because they make it look easy. The way they open their wings to air that can't be seen and risk everything for the joy of sailing up into the sky. They must simply know flying is what they are born to do. They passed by without flapping their wings or using any power on their own but tipped toward me flirtatiously when I tried to decide if a case could be made for love. It's a risky venture. The heart is tender, wounds draw, convincing shadows over light, bearing down with the weight of an anchor, more suitable for a cargo ship than a spirit that's supposed to be free. But our hearts are encoded with memory of the place from whence we've come, the image of God. We are of love. We are meant for love even more than hawks are meant to fly. Seeing them soar, remembering why I was born.